Welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. I took a couple weeks off to just relax and knit a lot. And all I worked on during that time was sweaters. So I thought it'd be really fun to talk to y'all about sweaters as we're heading into fall. It's gonna be sort of an unofficial sweater month here on Drowning in Yarn. What better way to kick that off than by showing you my favorite way to cast on sweaters. Historically, I've knit a lot of top-down seamless sweaters. So the cast on edge starts at the neckline. So I think it's really worth it to create a little bit more polish in that cast on edge since it's right by your face. And my favorite way recently to create that neckline cast on is with the alternating cable to cast on. But this cast on can really be used for anything. I also use it to cast on hats and it has plenty of stretch in that instance for me as well. So I think it's just a really great all around cast on. But in the context of sweaters, I think it's a winner. It's a little bit easier to work than a tubular cast on while still providing a lot of that same polish. And I think it looks a lot better than a long tail cast on, though it takes a little bit extra time to cast on versus a long tail cast on. You can see here that it doesn't have that sort of hard edge that the long tail cast on has where you actually put those stitches on the needle and the stitches sort of seem to come from nowhere. I think it's worth a little extra time it takes to cast on versus a long tail cast on to get that little extra polish in your finished project. So let's cast on the slip stitch that gets this cast on started and I will show you how to work it from there. So the rib cable cast on starts with one stitch that you make by creating a slip stitch and placing that on your left hand needle. When you do this, you're just gonna want to make sure you leave a long enough tail so you have something to weave in at the end, but you're gonna be working with the yarn that comes off of your ball of yarn because this is a knitted cast on, so you don't need to estimate any yarn tail length like with the long tail cast on. So you'll place that slip stitch onto your left hand needle, and this is gonna count as a first stitch for your cast on, and it's also gonna count as a purl stitch because it has this little bump here. So we're gonna cast on our second stitch by knitting into this one stitch. So you'll insert your needle into the stitch knitwise, knit one stitch and pull that up. So now you're gonna have this first stitch on your left hand needle and the loop for the knit stitch you just made. And you're gonna wanna move this new stitch back to your left hand needle. And the way you're gonna do that is by inserting your left hand needle into this stitch from right to left. So you're gonna go in on the right side of that stitch, insert your needle, and then slip that stitch over. And you're gonna notice that will twist that stitch and that's what you want. And I'm gonna show you that again and again, so don't worry if that didn't make sense the first time. But now that you have your purl stitch and your knit stitch, we're gonna have to do another purl stitch. So we'll move the yarn to the front but it's also important here to note that every subsequent stitch we cast on is gonna be worked by inserting our needle into this space between these two stitches. So if you look at where my needle is, it's in the space that's between the two stitches and below the needle and above this bar of yarn that runs between the two stitches. So in this case, I'll insert my needle. I'm going to purl one stitch as I normally would pull out that loop and I'm gonna slip it to my left hand needle in the same manner. So my needle, my left hand needle will go on the right side of that stitch, slip into it from right to left, which twists the stitch. And then I'm gonna put that on my needle. Now we're gonna work another purl, or I'm sorry, another knit stitch. My needle is gonna go into this space that is between these two stitches on my needle and it's below the needle and above that bar of yarn. So you'll just go into that space between the stitches, making sure not to split your yarn, which I just did, but let's see, there we go. And knit the stitch and pull up the loop. Again, slipping it by inserting your left hand needle from right to left, which will twist that stitch. It is a little bit fiddly of a cast on, but the result is so worth it because it gives you a much better looking cast on, I think, than a long tail cast on that is still stretchy. And it is a lot easier to work than a tubular cast on. So I just purled that, pulled up the loop. I'm going to slip it to my other needle. And let's do one more knit stitch. 
I'm inserting my needle into that space between the last two stitches on the needle, knit that, pull up the loop, slip it back by inserting my left needle from right to left, twisting that stitch. One thing that you'll notice when you're doing this cast on is you might forget what stitch you just worked and it's fairly easy to find out. One thing that I do is because I start with a purl and then I do the knit and I'm always doing this whenever I'm working a one by one rib, I know that I need a purl, a knit, a purl, a knit. So I just always set it down only after I cast on a knit stitch Then I know that if I pick it back up, I am working a purl stitch. But you can also look at your cast on to figure out what you just cast on. If your working yarn is coming from the first stitch on the needle, so you can see here, the working yarn is coming from right here and it's facing towards the back of the work, that's a knit stitch. So I'll purl the stitch and then I'll show you where the yarn comes from when you just work a purl stitch. So I worked a purl stitch and now you can see the working yarn is coming from two stitches behind. So there's the first stitch, the second stitch, and then the working yarn is coming from right there and it's facing towards me. That's how I know I just worked a purl stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get about 30 stitches on and then we'll come back and I'll show you how you're gonna join this to work in the round. So I have 28 stitches on my needle now. I'm just gonna cast on the last two and then we'll join to work in the round. I wanted to point out though really quickly that one thing with this cast on that I don't really worry about too much is the tension of the cast on. As I knit the stitch and pull up the loop, you'll see that I pull a little bit of the tension or I pull a little bit of the slack out whenever I put that loop on the left hand needle. I pull that slack out, but I don't wanna make this too tight because then it's really hard to get my needle in between those two stitches whenever it's time to work the next stitch. And I worried whenever I first started doing this that I was gonna end up with like a really loose cast on edge, but I've noticed that as I work that next stitch, pull up that loop and put that stitch on, a lot of that extra tension just kind of works itself out and it kind of just comes out right just naturally in the process. So don't worry too much about your tension. Um, pull a little bit of that slack out whenever you put the stitch back on your left hand needle, but just don't make it too tight and you'll be fine. So now I have 30 stitches and because I'm doing one by one ribbing, I started with a purl stitch. So you will always end with a knit stitch. So that last stitch I put on my needle is a knit stitch. You can see because the yarn is coming from that first stitch and is pointing towards the back of my work. So that's a knit stitch. So now in order to join to work in the round, you could go ahead and just join to work in the round now, but it's a little bit simpler to knit the first row flat. So once you've cast on all your stitches, you know this last stitch is a knit stitch, so just go ahead and knit that stitch, and then you will purl the next stitch, and just keep on going back down the row, and then whenever you get to the beginning, then you've worked your first row, and you can go ahead and join to work in the round. I'm just finishing knitting these last four stitches, and then I'll show you how I join to work in the round. And the trick is there is no trick. After you've worked this first row, um, you join to work in the round like you would with any other cast on. You will notice that because you worked your first round before you join to work in the round, you may end up with a little bit of a gap where you do join. So you're just gonna wanna use that tail at the end and sew that up and you won't even see it. But it's worth it to have that little gap just to have worked that first row and it's a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna do this in Magic Loop. If you've never done Magic Loop and you wanna learn, I'll leave some resources down below, uh, but you can use any method to do this. Typically with the neckline of a sweater, I'd be working on 16 inch circular so I wouldn't have to worry about Magic Loop, but um, I've done the neck of a sweater in Magic Loop before whenever I didn't have the right size in a 16 inch or it was already being used on another project. So now I've got my working yarn coming from that last stitch that I just worked, which was a purl stitch. My first stitch here is a knit stitch. This is the beginning of the round. And you just knit like you would any other cast on. And now you're working in the round. You have an alternating cast on that gives you a really nice polished looking edge that's firm and professional looking, but it's also gonna be stretchy enough for your neckline. And 
it really didn't take that long. So I hope you enjoy this cast on and you use it in the future on your sweater projects. So that's all you have to do. It's super simple to work once you get the hang of it. And I think it gives awesome results. If there's another way that you found that works really well for you to cast on, drop a comment down below and let us all know. I would love to learn some new techniques from you all. And while you're down there looking at the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it to get notified when I post new content. I love to make educational, entertaining, and inspiring videos about knitting and yarn. So I hope you'll stick around with me in the future. But until next time, I hope you enjoy your knitting and I will see y'all later.